What's good you guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a super chill chit chat get ready with me. I've done one of these in a while now so I thought why not chat with you guys while I get ready for my dates. I'm super excited to get like glammed up and cute. I haven't gone on a date in a minute. My boyfriend's been out of town for like 10 days. So I've seen a lot of you guys DM me recently asking questions about friendships and relationships and setting boundaries and ending friendships. And I think a lot of you guys know I'm going through a lot of friendship changes myself. So I thought, why not sit down and chat with you guys about all the things that I've been learning recently about relationships and friendships and all of that jazz. So it's going to be super chill chit chat video. While I do my makeup, I'm also going to show you guys my outfit at the end of the video. But before I do that, I really want to show you guys the watch that I'm going to be wearing. I'm super excited that JBW is sponsoring this video. You guys know I'm obsessed with their watches and I have another watch from them that I want to show you guys. This is their Crystal 34 watch. This is the watch that I like to put on when I want to feel like a little bit extra bougie, a little bit more put together. Like even if I'm wearing a really casual outfit, I'll throw on this watch with like some really blingy rings and I just feel instantly more put together. This watch has 12 genuine diamonds. They're surrounded by Swarovski crystals. So it's very blingy, very icy. It like catches your eye. So yeah, this is one of my favorite watches. You guys have probably seen me wear it on Instagram a lot because I'm always wearing this watch. It's also super affordable like for what you're getting. If you guys have never checked out JBW's website, I highly recommend. They just make very high quality watches that are very much timeless. Even if you don't usually spend money on watches, I highly recommend just at least getting one to just throw onto an outfit to make you feel a little bit more put together again a little bit more just bougie even if your outfit's casual it can really instantly dress up an outfit so yeah i'll show you guys the complete outfit at the end of this video but again thank you to jbw for sponsoring the video i will leave a link to their website with my discount code down in the description box if you guys want to go check them out and yeah let's go ahead and move on to the makeup i always start with my brows because it's just easier i also feel like i'm like losing my voice a little bit like i don't know what's going on with me so sorry if i sound a little bit weird so like i said i get a lot of questions about friendships and as you guys know, I have been going through a lot of friendship changes in my life recently. I think I'm like in that phase where coming out of college, I no longer have the same priorities. And obviously like everyone when they graduate goes through different like changes in their lives. So I feel like with your friendships, they're going to naturally change. If you guys watch my vlogs, you guys know I've been ending some friendships and it's definitely been kind of hard for me. Like I've had drama i've had really bad friend breakups recently i think one of the biggest lessons that i've learned recently and this is something that my mom has been trying to tell me for years and i just never wanted to accept it is that a lot of friendships especially when you're young they're not meant to be in your life forever right like you don't have to stay in friendships just because you were friends with someone at one point or just because you have history they're genuinely i know it's like such a cliche saying saying but i feel like people are genuinely meant to be in your life for a season some people like some people are meant to be in your life for a temporary amount of time to teach you a lesson to help you in that phase of your life but that doesn't necessarily mean that they always have to be in your life and that also doesn't have to be a bad thing like i feel like it doesn't have to be any kind of hard feelings like obviously it's really hard ending friendships but i i'm definitely learning that like you can look back on your memories with someone and appreciate the times that you did have in the phase of the life that you were in and how that friendship served you in that phase of your life but as you grow and as you get older especially i think like transitioning from high school to college in college to like the real world the people who served you at one point are not always going to serve you in the next phase of your life and that's totally okay and i think when you're young it's really hard to accept that because i feel like when you're friends with someone especially like through all these me like when you're friends with someone through all the memories that you're making while you're in college or like you're in high school or like when you're a kid because you're growing with them it's really hard to accept the fact that like not everyone needs to stay in your life forever and i think for me it was really hard to accept that especially because i would see my friends as almost like family like if i felt really really close to you i felt like i had to do anything that i could to make sure that we would be good right like i just i felt very very loyal to all of my friendships especially when i was in college and i think the reason why i was like this like now that i'm going to therapy i'm definitely learning more about myself and why i am the way that i am i think the reason why i was like that is because for me growing up i was the youngest in my family so my siblings are nine years older than me 
And then my parents got divorced when I was in middle school, right? So like right around the time that my siblings went to college, they were in college in the same state as me, but then we moved to Texas, right? So we moved to Texas. So I wasn't seeing my siblings. I was only seeing my older sisters like every, like maybe twice a year or so. And then when my parents got divorced, my dad left, right? So it went from like a family of five to like me and my mom. And my mom was working, she was busy, she was going through her own stuff. You know, like everyone, when, you're, when your parents get divorced, you kind of feel like a little bit more isolated from your parents because they're going through their own emotional journey with that divorce, right? And so for me, I think when I was growing up, I felt very isolated. Like I felt like I went from having this feeling of like a family unit to within a year having that completely go away. So I feel like as I got older and as I started getting close with people, especially in college, that was the first time I really started becoming friends with um, black people because I grew up around white people. So I always felt like isolated in high school and middle school. And so for me, I think I was almost treating them as family because I wanted to recreate that sense of security that I had when my whole family was together, if that makes sense. It's crazy like what you learn as you go to therapy and as you learn about yourself. So for me, I just felt very, very loyal to all of my friendships, all of the close, the people that I felt like I was close with in college, right? And I don't think that everyone sees friendships the same way. That's like one of the biggest lessons that I learned is with friendships, everyone is different because of the way that they are raised. Not everyone sees friendships the same way. Not everyone treats their friends the same way. A lot of times the way people act in friendships is a reflection of the way that they are raised. Everyone has their own issues. Everyone has their own view of what friendship is to them. And so I had to learn that like over the past few years with a lot of my friendships, when you're becoming friends with people, you have to really decide for yourself what values you have and what values for you are like non-negotiables, right? Because it's okay that people are gonna be different from you. You don't have to find friends who are exactly like you, but I feel like the more inward work that you do with yourself and the more you learn about yourself, the more you can kind of realize like, okay, if I keep being friends with this person, who does not value loyalty the same way that I do, this is gonna continue triggering me and it's gonna continue being an issue for me and I just don't feel like this is a healthy friendship for my mental health. It doesn't make this person a bad person. Like yes, toxic people exist, but everyone is the way they are for a reason. Everyone is like trying their best. At least I try to believe that. There are bad people out there, don't get me wrong. But you know, I think the word like toxic friendship is kind of thrown around when in reality it's like everyone is raised very differently everyone has their own view of life and you can't really like take things personally because everyone is different and everyone thinks everyone's view and everyone's lens of looking at life is their valid truth because of the way that they are raised right like you can't see life through the same lens as someone else and so that all to say i've really had to learn for myself what are things that are non-negotiables and what are things that like honestly your friends can teach you because if you're different from your friends a lot of times they can teach you things like my my best friend because she is so different from me she's taught me so many things about being kinder to people she's taught me how to be more open-minded when it comes to meeting people she's taught me how to be more forgiving and how to be just more laid back when it comes you know like i'm just more reserved when it comes to meeting people but basically and so she's kind of taught me how to kind of open up more be more friendly all those things and i've kind of taught her how to like put her foot down how to draw boundaries all of those things so as you start to like notice the differences between you and your friends i feel like you can really learn from each other if those differences are still compatible enough for you to still be close but then on the other hand there are certain things that you might observe in your friends that to you are just non negotiable so for me one of my non-negotiables is lying i just don't fuck with lying like no matter what the reason is behind it even if i know someone is raised a certain way and maybe they're prone to lying because they feel like they had to in their past whatever to me i can't feel close to someone who's lying to me i just don't like the way it feels so for me as i've gotten older i've really learned that like with my values and with what my values are like now there are certain things in friendships that are just non-negotiables for me and i've started to be able to like to communicate that to people right like if i notice that a friend is lying to me constantly i will call them out for it because i'm like that like to me setting a boundary you can't be in a healthy friendship if you cannot communicate something that for you 
is a non-negotiable, right? Because how is someone ever going to know that that thing is bothering you if you don't communicate it to them? And sometimes it can be hard. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, if you feel really close to someone, it can be hard to be like, hey, I really do not feel cool with you doing this. But for me, I'm not going to lie. It's not that hard for me to do because I'm a confrontational person. I'm, qu I'm quick to tell people what's bothering me almost too quick. So I've really more had to learn how to accept people for their differences. Um, that all to say, you really have to learn how to like set your boundaries. But I feel like in order to set those boundaries, you really have to understand what are your non-negotiables, right? And you have to understand that like someone like friends are going to mess up. Friends are going to make mistakes. But if someone is constantly doing those things, and if you set your boundary and then they're still doing it, then that's a sign that that friendship, that person may not be trying to change, right? They, you're, they may value your friendship. They may want to be friends with you, but sometimes people just don't want to change things, right? Sometimes people are comfortable with the way that they are acting, even if it does hurt people. And you're going to eventually have to decide when you do need to walk away. And it's not gonna be easy, it sucks, it's not fun. But if someone is continuously hurting you and if someone doesn't wanna change, then that friendship is not bringing you value. And that's the other thing I will say too, is like as you start to learn more about yourself and spend more time by yourself, because I think that's really important in helping you understand what you need out of your relationships. As you learn more about yourself, you may start to realize that like your values, and I hate overusing the word values, but you like, you may start to realize that the phase of the life that you're in what you're focused on, where you're growing may not be aligned with old friendships. And that's why I say it's like, even if someone is not crossing a boundary for you, even if it's not something so explicit as someone lying to you or talking to you behind your back or whatever, there may just be friendships that are just no longer serving you because of the season of your life that you're in. And I think that's the hardest, those are the hardest friendships to end because even if someone's not intentionally or again, very obviously hurting you, they just may not be aligned with the kind of person that you want to be. You may be focused on growing mentally and emotionally and going to the gym more and healthier habits. And you may have friendships from college or from school or from whatever. You may have friendships that those people are just focused on partying or those people, when you're around them, you're not actually having real conversations about things that you are interested in or things that you are areas where you're growing your conversations may be about old bullshit that you don't really care about or like drama or gossip or like you're just drinking with them or taking cute pictures and it's like fun to be around them and so for me like the friend group that i was around in college a lot i love a lot of them to death i will still I will always love them, like don't get me wrong, and I'm still really close with a lot of them. But a lot of them I just don't hang around as much because I just don't get value from going out as much as I did when I was in college. When I was in college, I was going out so much. I remember I was reading like some of my old journals, and I remember writing in one of my journals in like 2019, I was like, I feel like I'm limiting my own potential. I feel like I'm just stalling like the kind of person that I can be because I'm constantly going out and partying and like doing drugs. And like, that's not to say that it's your friend's fault that you are holding yourself back, right? Like I think truly your friendships are a reflection of you and you truly are an accumulation of the people that you hang around. If you're choosing to constantly put off your own growth, you're naturally going to attract people who are doing the same. And as you start hanging around those people more and more, you will continue to excuse your own behavior because you're surrounded by people who are all doing the same thing, right? So like if you're telling yourself that you want to focus more on your passion or you want to focus more on like your mental growth or your emotional growth, or like your relationship with God and the universe, right? If you're telling yourself you wanna do those things, but you're constantly around people who are not aligned with those values, you're gonna continue holding yourself back. That's the biggest lesson that I really, really had to learn in the past couple of years. I have so many friendships from college. I have a girl group from college that I'm so close with and we're all so different. We've gotten into so many different fights and arguments and not like actual physical fights, but like we've gotten into arguments and we've disagreed, but there's so many girls from my college. There's so many individual friendships that I have from college that I hold so close to me because I feel like I get so, so much value out of them. And I feel like even now as we're growing up, I'm talking to them and we're all, we're all at a point in our lives where it's like, yeah, we still go out together. Like, don't get me wrong. We still go out, we still have fun, but it's like, 
we're at a point in our lives where I feel like every time I talk to them, I feel like we are learning from each other and we're all, we value the same things, right? And now in a lot of the friendships that I'm making as I'm older, like I've told you guys, if you guys watch my Tulum video, the friendships that I'm starting to find are friendships where, again, we're helping each other grow. We're like learning from each other. I leave conversations with these friends, like with all the people that I have in my life now, all the people that I'm close with, I leave my conversations with all these people feeling like fulfilled. Like I feel like energized, like I feel excited about life. And that's really what it comes down to is like observing your energy and how you feel around certain people. And I'm looking back at some of my old friendships and I'm realizing that like a lot of people that I used to hang out with, I would leave feeling drained. I would leave feeling anxious and on edge and like, like I had to be someone that I wasn't in order to be accepted and loved. and. I don't know, I think it really just comes down to like when you really, really observe how you feel around certain people, when you observe the conversations that you're having around certain friends, what it really comes down to for me now in my life and what's important for me in friendships is am I, am I learning anything from my friendships? So yeah, hopefully that makes sense. I really do not like this lip color, but I lost my other one. So we're gonna have to use this one. I don't know, bro. I just wanna be good at makeup, but I just will never be that person i'm not gonna lie all right guys so this is the final look i'm wearing this super simple black dress from nasty gal it's a long sleeve but it's super super thin and then my favorite part about it is the back i just think it's so so cute it's very short as well so it kind of fits very nicely and then my um shoes are also from nasty gal I think yes and then my bag is thrifted i just thought it was this really fun print so yeah and then my jewelry as you guys know i'm wearing my jbw watch oops it's kind of tilted i'm wearing my jbw watch and then my rings are from kitten co and then my necklaces this one's actually from kitten co as well this little butterfly one and then this little Dior one. I can't remember the name of the brand, but I'll leave it on the screen. But yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.